Welcome back to my channel, my name is Michael, and today I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that is a tag. And this is the Alphabet Soup book tag, A is for author. This was originally created by Sean the Book Maniac, and I was tagged by Jacqueline at 6 minutes for me. And the reason why I decided to do the tag is Jacqueline mentioned that I read exclusively translations and while this is not entirely true, it is definitely something that I inspire to. My in real book club really destroys my perfect streak of reading translations. And because it's Women in Translation Month coming up very soon, I decided that I'm going to do this tag using only Women in Translation. So the first one is A is for Alphabet, a good book by an author whose first name or last name starts with the letter A. And for that, I'm going to go with Slavlana Aleksevich, and she writes a lot of great non-fiction books in translation. She is a Belarus author and journalist who really likes to focus on getting to know ordinary people and getting to hear their stories. She does kind of guide the questions to form a narrative, but it's still a very interesting read. The one I would recommend starting with is Secondhand Time, which dives into people's experiences and how they felt about the collapse of the Soviet Union. So you get a lot of different people's accounts of what was going on, people from different ages, and you just really hear a range of different opinions. And it's really interesting to just see how people thought about the Soviet Union and its collapse. So I recommend that one. The Unwomanly Face of War is another great one to read, and that's talking with women involved in the Second World War. These are people that have experienced war, but really their stories don't get told and really see just everything about their lives, like how it affected them, how they were perceived by the other soldiers and just the extraordinary lengths they would go to to serve their country and to serve Russia or the Soviet Union. Question two is, A is for, well, A, the last book you read with an article, one letter, word A in the title. And for that, I'm going to go with Notes of a Crocodile by Quinn Bajin, and this is translated by Bonnie Ho. And I've probably talked about this recently. I love this book. It's a book where it explores queer characters in Taiwan, and they're kind of portrayed as crocodiles in human clothing. So you get this real sense of, feeling like outsiders, feeling like they don't belong in society and the emotions and their struggles to feel a part of the world, feel connected to people and feel this pain within them of being unable to be true to themselves. And the author was very young when she wrote this. She suicided at 26 years old and just the knowledge of that it's just so heartbreaking to know that these are the feelings that she had. And while the book isn't as dark as her own life, it does have a little bit of optimism, which is what definitely helped drive the book. But it's one of those books that I keep talking about and keep thinking about and I'll keep recommending. A is for Angry, a book that pissed you off. And I'm going to go with Pine Islands by... Marion Pushman, and this was translated by Jen Collage. And this was one of the books that was shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize. And it was terrible. I just really hated it. I was really annoyed with it. For starters, you've got a German writer writing about Japanese culture. And I really hate when authors are writing about other people's culture. It can be possible. It has been done well. I can probably give you a couple of examples where it has been done well, but I really feel like, especially because I'm reading a lot of translations, I'd rather read a 
novel or a piece of non-fiction by an author from that culture rather than someone else's idea of what this culture is like. And that's pretty much the core of what really pissed me off about this book. And it wasn't a great book. It shouldn't have been shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize. I would have put Faculty of Dreams in instead of that for the shortlist. But it's one of those books that I still get angry about. A is for Awesome, a top read of recent years. And I'm going to go with The Years by Anne Androx, and this was translated by Alison Strayer. The reason why I'm going with this one is because it's a piece of non-fiction, even though it was on the Mad Booker International shortlist as well, about her life in France, kind of chronicling life during World War II and beyond. So you get to see the changes with technology, with the philosophy, with the whole cultural swings and it's just so fascinating it's very French and very elegantly written which is obviously a reason I enjoyed it but there's something about it that just really stuck with me and it's a book I want to reread because I feel like going back to it I'll probably get a lot more out of it and I'll be definitely returning to this author in the future but I think it's one that Definitely needs to be shouted out. A is for R, a book whose title includes at least three A's, bonus for more than three A's. And that was kind of boring. So what I did was I went with an author that had three A's in it. And I'm going to go with Mars by Aja Bakic. And this was translated by Jennifer Zopel, and this is a book from Feminist Press. This is a Bosnian feminist science fiction collection of short stories. That's pretty much all you need to know. Feminist science fiction short stories from Bosnia. It was amazing. And what I love about this region is there is a lot, it seems to be mainly women writing. It The literary scene there is a lot of women, and there's some great stuff coming out from the, this part of the world. A is for Annoying, a character that drove you up the wall. And for this, I'm going to go with The Faculty of Dreams by Sarah Strasberg, translated by Deborah Brogan Turner. And the reason why is because this is a fictionalized account of Valerie Salonis's last days, and she is so extreme so weird so fascinating and like you can get really annoyed with her because she does things that you know might really set you off she plays by her own rules she is never doing what you expect to do and while that can be annoying it's still great to read and I really love this character and I think the way it was this book was written is what made this such a great book. I would not want to meet Valerie in real life, even though she's dead. But she's a very extreme feminist, and she wrote a manifesto called The Scum Manifesto, and a lot of people say the scum stands for the society of cutting up men. So that's the kind of extremist you can expect from her. A is for ambivalence, a book you're still not sure how you feel about. And for this, I'm going to go with The Governess by Anne Surrey. And this was translated by Mark Hitchinson. And there's a lot in this book that I kind of like, but it kind of read like a fairy tale. And that definitely really made it a struggle. It's like a very short book. And the topic is really interesting. You've got this school full of young boys and girls, and you've got this governess but the way it's written the way it's trying to replicate an old type fairy tale just really didn't sit well with me and I just don't know if I like the book I don't know if I hate the book it's somewhere in the middle and I can't make heads or tails of what how I really feel about it A is for anticipation a book new release or not, that you're very much looking forward to reading. And this is a book that's coming out 
next month, it's The Memory Police by Yoko Agawa, translated by Steven Snyder. And Steven Snyder seems to be working through most of Yoko Agawa's books, and I read four of the books so far, and I think she's a great author, so I'm really excited to check out The Memory Police. I think it's about mid-August it comes out. A is for, actually, a book you didn't expect to like, but you did. And I think this might have been Jacqueline's answer as well, but it was what she mentioned in that video. It was Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel, and this was translated by Carolyn and Thomas Christensen. And I'm not really a fan of magical realism. I don't really like fantasy-type elements in my reading. So I wasn't sure I was expecting this. I felt too historical fiction, too popular. But I ended up loving this book. I think it's a great book, great read. And one that definitely worth checking out. A is for How's It Going, A? A book you like by a Canadian writer or one that you want to read. And because I'm doing Women in Translation, I had to find one that I wanted to read because I don't think I've read anything translated from French Canadian. So I went with And the Birds Rain Down by Jocelyn Saucer, translated by Rhonda Mullins. And I can't remember what this book is about and I really don't care because I'd rather not know too much about a book I'm planning to read. But it has been a book that's been recommended to me a few times. I think Amy from a Dusty Bookshelf has recommended it. And there was a few other people, I can't remember who. So it's what I want to get to. I need to get a copy of it sometime. A is for Anticlimactic, a book you thought fizzled out in the end. And for this, I'm going to go with The Story of My Teeth by Valerie Lucelli, translated by Christina McSweeney. And I really love Valerie Lucelli, and I think she's a great writer. But this one just didn't quite work out. It started off really quirky, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a fun, interesting read. But it just never came together. It started off well. It just felt flat. It's not one of her best books. I don't think I can recommend it. I had fun reading it, but it's not one that I would tell people to read. I need to read more of her writing, so I can't rank it as a worst book because there's a couple of books I still need to read of hers. But compared to Faces in the Crowd, this book was a disappointment for me. And interesting enough, it's probably the one most people have read. Well, maybe they've read Lost Children Archive more now, but it was a very popular book, it seemed. And the last question is, A is for all the booktubers, tag a swank of people. I don't know if there's many people out there that haven't been tagged. I'll tag literary librations because they are new to booktube and probably aren't getting any attention yet. If he can step away from doing bro lit and talking about infinite jest for long enough, maybe he can do this tag. Maybe people that are thinking about coming back to booktube and haven't done it yet, I'll tag them. So maybe Rachel Louise Ackers, Cook's Book, Beyond the Epilogue, and anyone else that hasn't made a video for more than six months, do a tag, make a return. I'm sure Sean the Book Maniac would love people to do this one or do something else. Just make videos. If you want to find me elsewhere, all my links to social media are in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.